and welcome to here Kingdom Life. I am Pastor T. Wayne, and today we have a very special guest with us, Missionary Roy Olson. So welcome to Tea Time, Missionary Bishop. Yes, amen. My name is E. Roy Olson. E. E. What's the E stand for? I don't know. Well, my middle name is Emmanuel. So Eager. Well, yes. Well, you've got T, so I wanted an E. <laughs> but we are excited to have Missionary Roy. If you don't know him, we're going to be learning more about who he is and, and his wonderful family and also the missionary work that they are doing in Romania and really all of Europe. And so again, we're excited that you guys have taken a few moments to be on board with us today. And we're going to be talking about some different subject matter, a little bit uh, from everything from evangelism to actually the mission work and the mission field and kind of your story uh, briefly, how you uh, you know ended up in Romania and, and, and where that ministry started fi about 15 years ago, right? Uh, well, we went there first time in 2001. Okay. We bought property there in 2004. So that's 16 years, yes. Wow. So I'm just sharing this video. It's uh, that's that's flown by though, hadn't it? It's uh... Uh, we, we're just starting, just getting <laughs> warmed up. Hey, man. So again, we're just giving everyone just a couple moments to come on board. If you're just jumping on board, I see several of you there. Good morning to you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We will try to comment and reply as we can throughout our time together. So if you have any questions, any comments, good morning, Betty. Just uh, post them on the comment and share share our tea time today with uh, on your pages and with your family and with your friends. And so again. We are welcoming missionary Roy Olson to our time together today. And what I want to do is really, Roy, just kind of turn over to you. And, and let, why don't we start with the, the Apavia missions? And, and then we'll talk about evangelism, maybe some of those things, because we have some pastors that are here already. And, you know, I hope we can glean from you today. Well, I pastored a church in New York for just about 20 years. And then uh, through a series of uh, difficult transitional events I, I I left the church I didn't have to but I did and uh, so I came down here to Virginia to be with my sister Carol and brother-in-law Alan and uh, they took me in and uh, then uh, I came to a church it was called Great Bridge they changed their name now it's uh, it was Kingdom Life and now it's just it was Kingdom Great Bridge Life Ministries and now it was, <laughs> yeah anyway uh, they also took me in and they did mission trips and I went with them to Peru. I loved it. Yo hablo espanol, yo estudio espanol en la escuela dos años. I studied Spanish. I could communicate with the people. I loved it. In one week we prayed with 400 people mm. to receive Christ. Wow. And, I, I, and so it began to think, you know, what am I doing in the four walls of this church when the fields are white unto harvest? Amen. And so... Um, uh, I would have stayed there for the rest of my life, but then uh, we went to Romania. I didn't speak one word of Romanian. <laughs> uh, but um, after a while, uh, the uh, Romanian leader invited me to work with him there in right. uh, Romania. So I accepted, and, uh, and that led to the purchase of property. In 2004, I understood that the next chapter in my life, I couldn't mm. go back to the previous chapter. I had to let that go in the past and right. go into the new chapter. Sure. Transition is always difficult. Mm. It was, but it led to the, to the greatest ministry of my life. After 60 years of age, Amen. the greatest ministry of my life, I never dreamed in my fondest dreams that I, we would be doing what we're doing right sure, now. Sure, sure. Now you pastored for how many years? You were when, uh, Well, um, one place in New, inner New York City, I pastored for three and a half years, and in Pleasantville, New York, I was there for 20 years. And you were with the Assembly of Gods at that time, Assemblies right? Assemblies of God, we started with four people in a Bible right. study, and uh, by the time, you know, we went up to about 300 people. Praise the Lord. So right. after 20 years of pastoral ministry, you, you talk about transition into a new season. And, and, and maybe you're there and you're listening today. And maybe you're in, in the middle of a, of, a, of a seasonal transition or a time in your life where maybe, maybe you're, you're having to, to walk away from uh, a ministry or walk away from a, a place or, or maybe even move. I mean, my family and I just, you know, just went through a transition ourselves yes. um, just in December, moving back here to home to, to Chesapeake.
speak. So, so you know, and we're uh, glad you did. Uh, amen, amen. We are too. So it's exciting to be able to to hear though, even after all those years of ministry, and then uh, as you mentioned, you you had some turmoil, you had some things that happens in yes. in life events, and and it's easy. It would have probably been easy just to kind of stick your head in the sand at that age and at that stage, and just uh, you know, kind of just kind of coaxed along from there. But I thought about it. sure, well, I'm sure, I'm sure that because I think we we've all been in that place where you know we 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 question whether or not to keep going and, and to keep moving forward or keep trying and uh, and I'm glad you didn't give in to that my my driving verse of scripture was something that we know it's not something that we think or we hope this was something that the bible says we know and we know that God works God not the supreme Amen. court not the the, the government uh, God, God works all things, A-L-L, -L, all inclusive. Amen. Our mistakes, our sins, our failures, and our good stuff, he works it all together for good. Amen. And I held on to that like a drowning man onto my lifesaver. <laughs> and and, and I, I didn't see it, I didn't feel it, but I knew it. And so I didn't know how God could make something out of this, but God works all things together Amen. for good. Amen. And sometimes when we go through transitions in life, you know, keep keep believing, keep trusting because uh, there's something good coming. Even Jesus, Amen. who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the shame. He endured the present Amen. because of what he knew was coming. Amen. Something good is coming. Yeah, and you were coming, and you were coming, and I was coming. Amen. Amen. And, and then you and I, we met, actually, I was on staff here when you came from New York to Chesapeake. I liked you from yeah. the beginning. <laughs> and so you went, and so what, What? so that was about 16 years ago. Yes. You went to Romania. Yes. And uh, now, you did, did you go and come initially, or like, did you go on a short-term mission trip and then come yeah. back and then go again? Yes. How did, how did that work? And tell me about how God was dealing with you, um, you know, during that process of, of going to the mission field, because at that yeah. point, you, you had never, you know, been a full-time missionary. No. This was all new. Well, actually, I started ministry. I graduated college. I have a degree in physics and math, uh, just yeah. in case you didn't Shocking. know. And um, so I, I knew that I did not want to go down the rat race of have a job, have a family, uh, go to bed, uh, go to work. You know, no, no. I, I felt the call of God on right. my life. So um, uh, a visiting missionary came into town. I said, do you need any help? He said, we've been praying for help. Well, I went to the mission field straight from college at mm. 22 years of age. Okay. I went to the mission field. I was there for three and a half years. And where did you go? I went to the uh, Tortola, the capital oh, yeah. of the British Virgin Islands, <laughs> right. in the beautiful, magnificent Caribbean area yeah. with the white sand beaches. And um, Oh, to be a missionary in yeah, Tortola. And, of course, People back home, you know, they said, oh, yes, I'd like to get led <laughs> to go to the, uh, one of the tropical islands as a missionary, too. But, uh, but, but they, you know, a lot of people say that in joke, but you know, you know, I've done a lot of missions work in the Caribbean. Yeah. So from Jamaica to, to Trinidad to, to like St. Martin, St. Thomas, we've yeah, done trips. Yeah. And, and so a lot of people do look at that and they say, well, you're just vacationing. But the bottom line is that there are a lot of hurting people everywhere and, and they need the gospel. I went there weighing 220 pounds. I was a big boy even then. And uh, by the time I get back, I was 179 pounds wow. because of the stress sure. and the difficulty and really the, the uh, lack of proper food while right. I was sure, there. Sure. But, um, so then you went into pastoral ministry and then, yeah. so now fast forwarding to, to that time 16 years ago. So you went over, who invited you on that missions trip originally? Well, it was from uh, this church. Okay. They were doing. They were building churches mm -hmm. uh, for the poor, uh, the gypsy villages, and um, you know, just to have a little fun here. You know, I, yes, I do have a degree in physics and mathematics, and I was a, a senior pastor for 20 years, and so I went to the mission field, uh, and and we went to Romania, and the job they gave me is is to be the cement mixer. <laughs> you got sand, you got gravel, you got cement, you got water. Roy, mix it. And you know, I was glad to do it. Yeah, I amen. I was glad to do it. And so how long after that was it before you just, you, you felt that burden, that call, and then you actually relocated for a considerable yes. amount of time? It was in 2004, mm -hmm. very difficult year over there. Uh, you know, God, God made it very clear to me that the next chapter in my life 
was going to be in Romania, and I was to prove it to him and to God's people and to the powers of this world that I was dedicating my life to that by taking the money that I had as retirement from the Assemblies of God and invested in property in Romania. Amen. And so I was willing to do that. And my brother, and I love my brother, and he's a great man of God, but he called me, he said, Roy, you're crazy. He <laughs> said, you're investing all this money in, in, a, in a land 5,000 miles away, and you don't even speak the language. And I didn't at that time. Right. And uh, so on. But I knew that I knew that I knew I was willing to take that step of faith. Amen. And um, of course, uh, I didn't tell people then that it was God's will, you know. Right, sure. Because, uh, but now I can declare sure. it was God's will because of the, of the fruitfulness of what God has done there. Amen. And so I had the opportunity to go uh, and visit you in, yes. uh, in Romania. I believe it was around probably February of, of that year. In fact, my daughter Riley just turned 16 years old on Wednesday. Vicki yeah. was uh, about seven months pregnant yes, yes, with Riley. Yes. And so, yeah. so we, I went over and accepted the invitation and uh, we spent about 10 days, 11 days and had a incredible time in, in that, that beautiful land and yes. with those beautiful yeah. people. And that was my first time in Romania, in, in, in that part of Eastern Europe, and, and I absolutely was blown away by the ministry then. But the ministry has evolved considerably yeah. since, uh, and at that time, Roy was in a one-room, really a one-room studio, yes, uh, studio in, 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 the, in the second or third level of a church in, yeah. in a city called Lugos. And uh, you, you basically had a bed, a lamp, and a nightstand. And your computer. <laughs> so, <laughs> My computer. Yeah. And so um, to, to see that now, and, and to me, it's so, such humbling beginnings uh, to see it now. Um, because we, if you see it now, you, you may get this vision that it's, it always was. And no. Oh. You know, this, so this, this, was, this went from non-existent to 16 years ago to let's fast forward to Apavia today. And share with everybody what Apavia looks like. Yes, today we... Uh, we own, of course, it's God's property, but we, we own uh, four and a half acres. We have nine buildings. We have a conference center. We have a, a large uh, pavilion. We call it the Caleb Tabernacle. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we have had uh, uh, thousands of children and hundreds of pastors and leaders Amen. come through the ministry there. We've been in... Uh, Poland, Germany, the Czech Republic, mm -hmm. uh, Serbia, France. God has just opened doors Amen. that uh, our ministry is supposed to be a launching ground for ministers. And Pastor Wayne, just let me say, mm -hmm. to, uh, dear, dear saints, this man right here, we had him preaching in a church in Timisoara, oh. Romania. <laughs> and uh, the, when he was done, two things happened. Number one, the interpreter said, uh, something like, I never had so much fun interpreting <laughs> as for you, number one. And number two, one woman said, as Pastor T. Wayne Daniels was preaching like he Amen. does, she was healed during Amen. the preaching. Praise the Lord. And those were It's a powerful days. night. Oh, absolutely. Yes. And so even through that, you talked about the, the open doors to, to you. Yes. In fact, that was extended through you to me just a year or two ago when I went to the uh, Czech Republic and to Germany and to Poland. Well, that came through the God connections that God did through Shaina. you. That's exactly right. And so if you had to guess over the last 16 years, well, since Apavia uh, came into existence, how many, this roundabout number, how many young people or ministers or people have come across the campus of Apavia and in, in the ministry there that you've been able to impress, you know? Well, well, I would say hundreds of pastors and leaders and thousands of children. Praise the Lord. Uh, because we have the facilities, um, people, Romanians, look for a place to bring the children from the camp, uh, from their churches to a campground, which of course we have. Plus we have, you know, trampoline and swings and <laughs> ping pong and darts. Be careful of the dart and, and, and some things like that. So we, we, we are geared for that. So I would say hundreds of pastors and leaders and thousands of children. And we've had theological seminary students come Amen. as a group. And w listen to this, dear saints, what God does. You know, we would minister 
pray, lay hands on these students. And, uh, you know, they would weep. And one man, young man, a theological student said, I never in my lifetime had anybody lay hands on me and pray wow. a personal prayer just for me. Amen. And so, uh, you know, I feel like a surfboarder riding on a wave that I did not make. <laughs> I'm kind of along for the ride. Amen. And, and it is a ride. Buckle your seatbelt. Amen. You never know what's happening. Amen. So it's been amazing just to watch uh, the progress of the ministry over the years and the impact that the ministry has made. Now, um, I understand you have a YouTube channel. So yeah. for those that are listening and watching this, how do they connect to that YouTube channel? You, you just uh, look for Roy Olson, R-O-Y-O-L-S-E-N, look for Roy Olson on YouTube, and I'll pop up. There are other Roy Olsons, but you'll find me. I, I, you know, this is the way I look. Well, you're definitely one of a kind. So. <laughs> but he has about 300 videos. About 300 videos. Mm -hmm. yes. And covering a broad spectrum yes. of, of different teachings. But we right? did a series on evangelism, mm -hmm. five um, short videos, 15, 18 minutes on evangelism, because everybody is agreeing that we need to do evangelism, but this is more a how to do it. And how to do it. May I? Uh, Please. Go yeah. Now, okay. of course, we can't go through all five videos and we want to, you know, have you go and click on these videos. But this is one of the things I wanted you to share yeah. today, because I know this is at the core of who you are. Yes. It's really at the core of my ministry, yes. all of my ministry, and then many others that are watching now as well. You know, we, we went to a seminar called Making Disciples. Well, my thought was, yes, uh, but you've got to have believers. You don't make disciples of unbelievers. The evangelist got to do his job, and we are all evangelists, mm -hmm. to share the gospel so that those who disciple have something to work with. And here's just an example. For instance, I sit down. I know the verse in Romania, Romanian language now. You know, I speak it somewhat fluently. But take John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So you're going to explain this to somebody. <laughs> and so you say, here it is. For God so loved. God loves you. Mm. He doesn't hate you. He's not trying to get you. He's not trying to punish you. For God so loved you? the right. world. And that's not the planet. That's you. Mm. For God so loved the world that he did something. He gave his only begotten son. And then I asked the people. I said, what's his name? They all know Jesus. I said, yes. He, he loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever does one thing, not ten things, just one, one thing. thing right. Make the one thing the one thing. Whoever believes in him. We talk about saving faith. Oh, just take the little mustard seed that they have. Amen. Just whatever faith they have. Whoever believes in him, two things happen. Number one, they will not perish. Amen. How? Because they're so good, they give a lot of money. Whoever <laughs> believes in him, number one, will not perish. And number two, have everlasting life. And then Amen. I asked them, I said, do you believe in Jesus? Yes. Do you believe that he died for sins? Yes. Do you believe he died for your sins? Yes. Do you believe that he rose again from the dead? Yes. Do you believe that he's God manifest in flesh? Yes. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, he is the Son. Well, if you believe that you're a believer in Jesus, whoever believes in him, two things happen. You remember the first one, will not perish. Mm -hmm. Remember the second one, has everlasting life. So Amen. I asked them, I said, as a believer in Jesus Christ, not how you feel, but what does the Bible say in John 3, 16? If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, what will not happen to you? Mm. Oh, I, 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 I guess I will not perish. That's <laughs> right, because Jesus said that. If you believe in him, you will not perish. And what do you have? Everlasting. Everlasting. Amen. The light goes on. <laughs> the light, the Holy Spirit takes the word. If you don't give him no word, there's, there's no con thing to confirm. Amen. You've got to give him the word, and God confirms the word with signs following. And when the light goes on, <laughs> that's a sign following the ministry of the word. And what a beautiful, what a beautiful moment that is to, uh, to, to even witness and to be a part of. As you can see, he's very passionate about souls. And the reason why is because you've been in that moment so many times yeah. and you've seen the awakening. I've seen it. And, uh, 
there's no, to me, there's no better, there's no better moment in the life of, of, a, of a new believer than, than right there when they come to that understanding. Yes. This is what Christ has done for them. Yes, yes. Then you get a new believer, then you bring them into church. Uh, they're, they're, dear saints, they're still screwed up. They still got problems. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say, it says they will not perish but heaven. It doesn't say they reach perfection. Right. In fact, most of you, and I speak for myself, we haven't reached perfection Me either. either. <laughs> We're dealing with stuff, and they're dealing with stuff. So we've got to be patient with them, you know, just Amen. like a newborn baby, you know, just love it. Just love that little baby, you know. <laughs> it, it can't do anything. Don't vacuum. Don't wash the car. Don't wash the dishes. Don't anything. It doesn't do any good. And sometimes the baby little stinks up the house. Well, that's <laughs> part of bringing up a baby. Right. And then you nurture them, and then you train them, you love them and then nurture. you send them. Yeah. To Kingdom Life. <laughs> right. To uh, KO Kids uh, with Pastor Vicky. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but well, that's exciting. And 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 again, as you mentioned to me, I mean. The gospel is an evangelistic message. Yes. It, it, it is a message of going. It is a message of, of presenting and sharing what Christ has yes. done in your life and what we know. And, 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 and I, love, I love what you said there. Would, would you actually share that scripture, John 3, 16, in, in Romanian? Finca tite multa iubitum iseolumia, ca adat pe singrua lui fiu pentruca. Or cine crede in you, sa nu piara, nu piara, ci sa aiba viața veșnică, life eternal. Praise the Lord. And so just again, this is the word of God, and, and this is what God has promised. And so I think, you know, for, as a pastor, and there are many pastors that you're connected with, many in the state of Virginia. Yes. Um, you know, can you um, maybe, maybe, you know, share about some of those churches around the state, like Terry and Chad and those and Rick and... Uh, yes, uh, Chad in Withville, Virginia, Ted in Newport, New Chad, uh, Eric uh, Medford in uh, Manassas, Virginia. We have uh, locally here a uh, Cornerstone Church of God in Norfolk. And God has blessed us richly um, through the pastors. Uh, not, not, we, we, I don't want your money. <laughs> I want your life. I want the, the men of God to come. What has been built there has not been a result of Roy. It's been a result of men like Pastor Wayne and others who have come, and they've poured out their life and their ministry in Romania. Every time they do it, you know, I get a little of the credit, you know, but I didn't do it, you know. But I'm smart enough to know that lift the men of God, Praise send the, the men of God. They're filled with the Holy Spirit. They've got a call that I don't have. Absolutely. I use the call that I have, and my call is to help others use their call. Facilitator. Thank you. <laughs> so, so uh, let's talk a little bit about that. I know, I know we don't have a lot of time left, but if you're there and you're you're interested in possibly coming for a short-term missions trip to Romania, um, what do we talk about that? You know, what what, what should they do? Email, message, call. Yes, um, uh, on my on my Facebook um, page, and I do have a Facebook page. Uh, uh, again, Roy Olson, you know, just communicate with me. And we'll take it from there, you know, generally to get a, a rough idea, we, we recommend that people come for a minimum of 10 days. We like to have you for two weekends. And um, uh, then the, the cost will run around uh, $1,500 round trip and transportation, and generally $30 a day for your time there. So for less than $2,000, you can have a life-changing, unforgettable, we'll even take you to the castle <laughs> and to the fortress Amen. and uh, have a life-changing experience. You'll never forget it. Amen. And, um, and I would also yeah. encourage, too, for pastors and ministers or maybe youth leaders, um, this is a great place to take your youth group. Um, yes. the, the facility there at Apavia that Roy mentioned, I, I would encourage you to go online, go, go to the Facebook page, go uh, and, and, and see the photos of this incredible property. The kids will have a ball on the property. They could also be of use on the property, but also just doing the work of the ministry in, in that area and in, in, in surrounding areas. Your teams could go, and, and I know that they're going to be safe. I know they're going to be blessed. And yeah. uh, like you said, 
their life is going to be changed. Uh, that's one thing about the mission field. Wherever you go, uh, you know, if you go for that reason that I'm going to do God's work, you, here's the thing. We always go on the mission field thinking that we're going to go help somebody else. And, and maybe we, we do, but at the same time, I, I, I have found yes. a lot of benefit yes. personally of my time on the mission field. Yes. And so I want to thank you for, for the, the sacrifice, the investment, um, uh, the going that, that you have done for, for the last 16 years. With pleasure, but I don't have a choice. <laughs> Amen, right? <laughs> so, uh, again, I want to encourage you, if you would like to become a supporter, too. Uh, you know, I know, every, you know, Roy doesn't, you know, he didn't say it's not, it's not about the money. But the money certainly does help to do the yeah. ministry. And, yeah. and there's always, uh, you know, construction that's happening and expansions. And, and there's also things that happen on the property. So when these thousands of kids are, are, who have not yet come have a place to go and a place that's comfortable, you know, t share with them how they could give. Uh, well, uh, the, the, number one, uh, go to the Facebook page and we can give you uh, the, the details. But basically, if, you, if, you, if you're a part of Kingdom Life, uh, you know, just uh, mark it on the envelope. Put my name on there or Apavia Ministries, better not my name, uh, on there or Romania or something like that. And Pastor Wayne and Pastor Tammy and team, they know where to direct those funds. Amen. And uh, they send uh, your gifts uh, direct to us. There's no overhead costs or anything right. like that. And then you're investing in a ministry that's homegrown. We're, we're changing the world in some way through your gifts. Amen. It costs us around $40,000 a year to uh, run the ministry. And for each camp, for each f camp of 40 kids, it costs around $3,000. Mm. And so if you'd like to support a camp, um, you know, just write out a check to Kingdom Life, make it out to Kingdom Life, but make sure that you have Royals in Romania on the mm. envelope, uh, and uh, that'll get right to us. And if you'd like to sponsor 10 camps, <laughs> it's just $30,000. That's it, that's it. And uh, You never and, know. You never know. But, and I will say, so at Kingdom Life, if you want to give online, say you're not local, you can just go to kingdomlife.com and there is a, uh, a, pay, uh, a pay icon. And if you put, uh, you know, or give icon, if you put on that and you can put a little special note in the corner that just says Roy Olson, uh, Apavia, Romania Missions, or anything of that nature, and we will absolutely know where it goes. So again, we're excited to, to have been spending that time. Anything else you want to say uh, before we pray? And Yes, I would like to say that I, I, I sense God saying to those of you who are watching, each one, that you are an incredible, valuable, uh, passionate, wonderful person, Amen. that God loves you far more deeply than you even can conceive of. Amen. The love of Christ that passes knowledge, and you have a place in the kingdom for whatever gift and talent God has put within you, there's a slot for you Amen. in the mission field, whether it be at home or abroad, Amen. and God loves you desperately, passionately, deeply, Amen. and so do we. Amen. So, Pastor, you're getting ready to head back in uh, June, June 12th, yes. 16th? Well, uh, the, the, the borders have been closed for us. Right. Uh, Romania closed the borders. So, um, we were supposed to leave uh, June the 6th. Well, we were supposed to leave March 24. Then when it was June 6th. Right now it's June 30th. June 30th. So that we'd be there on July 1st. Good. So, so between here and there, if you're a pastor or in, and or uh, connected to a pastor and, and they would like to maybe have you come and speak yes. um, at a service or, or, or online or I, something I, like that. I do driving church yeah, services. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, just contact uh, Missionary Roy and, uh, you know, he's an ordained bishop in the Church of God. And he also has a Church of God. If you're a Church of God, he has a Church of God uh, missions number yes. uh, that uh, that you can look up at any time and give. And, of course, it's all tax, uh, tax deductible. Are we going to pray for these people? I want you to pray for them, please. Father, in Jesus' name, in the name of him who died and rose again from the dead and is alive today, in his name we pray blessing, yes, protection, angelic presence, and uh, the provision yes, of God for spirit, for soul, and body. Mm. Lord, draw us closer to yourself that we might indeed be and do all that you've called us yes. to be and to do. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. 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 Well, Bishop, thank you again for taking time today. And thank you all for joining with us. We want to encourage you. We have one more Sunday here at Kingdom Life where we're offering a drive-in church. Uh, yes. It's amazing. It's a hoot. Ten weeks. This will be t the tenth Sunday this week, and we've got good weather. And we want to invite you to come. Be with us this week. Uh, on the 31st, we're back together again um, in the sanctuary. We have two services if you're in the area. Come be with us at one of those. If not, we are still going to offer the radio uh, streaming uh, through Facebook, but also the radio if you just want to come to the property but not quite ready to come in you'll be able to pull into the property and also watch online and or tune on to your radio dial yes. but again thank yes. you we're going to be praying for you as well thank and uh, thank you all again for joining with us and we look forward to seeing you soon god bless everybody bye-bye god bless